Friday to you guys. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day today. Um, I have a little guest here that's going to be here with me today. He wanted to come and sit with me, so he's going to be into my videos today. Can you say hi? Can you say hi, Kata? Look, can you say hi? Are you going to act shy? Say hi. Say hi. <laughs> okay, so. Today I'm going to be um, doing a video about the process that we went through in joining the military from start to uh, finish pretty much. Um, so I'm going to start from the beginning from when he went to talk to a recruiter and when he went through basic training and stuff like that. So I give you, so if any of you are, are out there and you're thinking about getting into the military or if you have um, a spouse that's joining, then you will see, um, you'll have an insight on what to expect. So, um, I did take some notes, so if you guys see me looking down, it's because I did take some notes, because it is, it's a process, it's a lot. Um, so, in the beginning, um, when he first told me that he wanted to join the army, um, he did go talk to a recruiter, and... The recruiter um, that he wants to go talk to was the recruiter who also, um, his cousin had recently just joined the army. So he wants to go talk to, um, his, to him because his cousin recommended him and said that he was really good at what he did and stuff like that. So we went to go talk to the recruiter and he gave us information and so we took the information that he gave us and we sat on it for a while and we talked about it and we talked and talked and talked. Um... So, and while he was in the process, while we were in the process of thinking about it, he was also in the process of studying for the ASVAB. Um, because when you do, before you, before you enter into the military, you have to go take a test, which is called the ASVAB. And it's basically, um, like math and, uh, English and stuff like that. And depending on what you score on your ASVAB test is... Um, depending on what you score is what jobs come, what jobs are available to you. Um, so he went to go take, he went to go take the ASVAB test and the first time he went to go take the ASVAB test, he did fail the test. Now, the reason why he failed was, well, he told me that when, while they were taking the test, a couple of them, their computers just shut off. So, they don't know why the computers shut off, but it just shut off. So, their computers shut off, and when it came back on, it basically told them that they failed. So, they don't know what happened. So, that's that they don't know what happened or whatever. So, they had to come back and take the test. And the second time he came back to take the test, he did pass it. So, when he passed it, um, his recruiter basically gave him a list of jobs um to choose from and um i think he really wanted to be a um a mp was a military police officer but um he wasn't able to get that job so the job that he did get was 88 mike which is a truck driver um yeah so um after after he took the test, they basically, uh, I mean, after he picked his job, they basically went through more paperwork and he had to sign papers and he had to bring certain information and stuff like that. Um, after he did all of that, then he had to go to MIPS and basically when he went to MIPS, it's where they get sworn in and things like that. So we did get to go see him. Um, get sworn into the military after after they get sworn in um, depending when what date that what date they give them um, they have to leave to go to basic training so I think it was maybe like a few weeks 
I mean, I think it was maybe like a few months or like a month and a half um, away that he had to go to basic training. So, um, during that time or whatever, they just basically got, he just basically got everything that he needed. Um, a lot of times they tell you, well, honestly, you don't need to bring a lot with you because once you get there, they're going to give you, um, I think it's like a $250, um, advance pretty much that's going to come out your check and you will basically purchase everything you need because you have to wear a certain kind of underwear, a certain kind of socks, and you only can have like a certain size products and stuff like that. So I don't recommend taking anything, a lot of stuff with you because you're probably not going to be able to use it. Um, and don't take anything any contraband like no snacks no, nothing nothing like that you can't take any of that kind of stuff with you so definitely leave it at home um so yeah after um when the day came for him to go to basic training um they had to fly on the airplane so the morning the morning of that he's getting ready to leave i did get to drop him off at um i could i couldn't drop him off at the airport for some reason i don't know why i had to drop him off with his recruiter and then his recruiter was going to take them to, down to um down to the airport so y'all when i dropped him off i boohoo cried i was crying 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 I did not want to let him go. I did not want to leave. After he left and got in the car, I just, once I seen him drive away, I just sat in the car and I just broke down. Like, me and my husband had never been separated before. We've always been together. So, it was going to be really, really hard for me to see him just leave like that. And it was really tough. It was really hard. But um, I eventually got through it because that's one thing that you have to do. You have to be strong for your significant other. Um, don't tell them any negative things or anything like that because you don't want them to get sidetracked. You want them to go there, do what they have to do so they can hurry and come back home to you. Um, um, he did get to talk to me while he was traveling. So... Um, when he, before he got on the airplane, after he got off the airplane, he did text me and let me know what was going on and stuff like that. Um, when he arrived at Fort Leonard Wood, they have to do, uh, before they get split up and go into their different companies or whatever, or, uh, yeah, into their different companies, they are, they go to, um, this place called, I think it's called End Processing or something like that, and it's basically where you have to do all your paperwork, um, there and if you have dependents and stuff like that and um you do that there and then put them on your insurance if you're married then you um and stuff like that you have to like put your family in the deers program which is for like medic i mean um for like insurance and stuff like that and medical stuff and dental stuff and stuff like that um they stayed there for I think he was there for a little while. I can't remember exactly how long he was there, but it just depends. It varies. But he was there for a little while. Um, and when they do make it there to Fort Leonard Wood or, or wherever they go, I'm assuming they do it at most bases, but at, when he got to Fort Leonard Wood, as soon as he got there, he did call me. Um, I think it was mid midnight, so I got a... Um, it was around midnight, I think. He called me. He finally was able to call me. But when they call you, they basically only tell you that they made it safely and that you will hear from them soon. And it's basically a script that they read. And they can only read the script. They can't say anything else other than that script. So they read the script to you and then they just hang up the phone. They can't tell you anything. So I recommend you, while they're talking, tell them how much you love them and stuff like that. Because once they're done reading the script, they have to hang up. Um, after they get, after that, they take up their phones, they confiscate their phones and stuff like that. Um, they aren't able to call you. My, I did get to talk to my husband while he was in, in, while he was in, in processing only because he had to ask me like different questions and stuff and regarding the paperwork and stuff like that. So that was the only reason why I did 
actually get to talk to him while he was in process in processing um they do get to write you while you are there i did receive like two letters from my husband while he was in there but you can't write them back because um they're not going to stay there so by the time you get your letters and stuff like that they may be already leaving with their different companies so they um your spouse will tell you not to write them back because that is not their permanent address when they get to their permanent address they will either be allowed to call you to give you the address or they will send you the address in um in a letter um he's sleeping <laughs> Um, so yeah, um, that's what will happen. And so, um, I got tons and tons of letters. I do recommend you writing them tons a lot. Um, write them letters. Don't tell them anything negative in their letters. Like I said, you want to motivate them and uplift them. You don't want, um, them focusing on any negative stuff because you don't want them to lose their focus. Um, um, and the letters, writing letters, it really does mean a lot to them, be, um, especially since they can't be there. So I would recommend, you know, telling them how much you love them and stuff like that. Letting them know what you're doing daily and stuff like that and how much you miss them and encourage them and motivate them and things like that. Um, it does take a while for them to get their letters and stuff like that, especially at the beginning um, because it's a lot of different companies and when the mail comes in um it takes time for them i guess to distribute the different mail to the different companies and stuff like that so it may take a while for you to um for them to get the mail so um if you don't get uh don't get a letter back in a hurry don't uh don't be sad or anything like that well i know you're gonna be sad but don't be mad or anything like that um, and think that they're not writing you back or they're ignoring you or something like that because that's not the case It just takes some time to get the letters to them and then they they be so busy with training and stuff like that. So um, They don't really have a lot of time to write back So if I did get some very very very, very short letters um, especially around the time when they had to go out in the woods and stuff like that and spend the night out there I got very very short letters because they were doing a lot of training out there and they barely had any downtime um what else um Um, while they are in basic training, um, like I said, their phones will be confiscated. Um, they won't have their phones on them, but depending on what, um, it really depends on the sergeant of the company. Um, they may let them call like every Sunday or they may let them call at different random times throughout um boot camp if they're doing good and stuff like that i did get a few random phone calls from him so i got to talk i actually got to talk to him a lot during basic which was very 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 shocking to me um they had a lot of different random phone calls that they got to take and i got to talk to him also whenever he needed information from me for like paperwork and stuff like that or there was a time where i had a family emergency and i had to call him so i got to talk to him then so i got to talk to him a lot during boot camp but that's very 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 rare um they did have different companies that like i said they were able to call home every sunday um my husband's company wasn't like that they didn't get to call home every sunday um but like i said i got random phone calls from him and stuff like that um i do want to say answer every call because there's no telling what number that they could call from i got um because their phone may be dead they only have a certain amount of time to talk on the phone so their phone may be dead they may not have enough time to charge it um my husband did take portable chargers out there with him for cases like that so i do recommend taking some portable chargers with you um uh, with you when you go or with your spouse whenever they go um and i did have times where my spouse or my husband did call me from um like his friend's phone and stuff like that so yeah answer every phone call because 
once they call and you don't answer they may not be able to call back and you know they want to all the family members want to talk to him so he's going to be trying to make quick phone calls to different people and stuff like that and like i said they have a short period of time to talk and they have to get off the phone so um yeah look out for those phone calls um what else oh um while they're there um, majority of the time their unit um, or their company has a Facebook page so I think my husband was in I can't remember I think it was um, C company alpha or something like that I can't really remember but um, I looked online and they did have a, um, a company page so basically on the company page they um, every time that they go through different um, they do different stuff like obstacle courses and the gas chamber and stuff like that they do take pictures of that and on the facebook page they upload the pictures so i do recommend going on there about every week or so and you may be able to find your spouse in a picture luckily i did see my husband in a couple of pictures oh excuse me some pictures i didn't see him at all but there was a, um, quite a few pictures that I did get to see him. So that was good. And they also update on that and let you know what your, um, what your spouse. They have different phases and stuff like that. So they basically let you know the different phases um, that they're going through and stuff like that. And they um, update and let you know um, what they have going on or what they're about to do. Sometimes they will um, write on there. And let you know that they'll be getting their phone sometime soon and stuff like that. They also upload on there about graduation and things like that. And with graduation, you will get um, on the fifth week, I think it is, they will send a packet home to you. And it basically tells you everything about graduation, the graduation date, the graduation times. And um, I think it has like... It tells you um, about where you can stay and stuff like that. Because they do have um, um, hotels and stuff like that where you can stay at on base. I do recommend staying on base if you're going to attend um, graduation. I do. I really do recommend staying on base. Um, for one, it is a lot. It is so much cheaper to live on base. And you... Um, you want to spend as much time as you can with them so you don't want to have to worry about driving all the way back to your hotel and stuff like that and then that's time that you could have spent with your um spouse or family member or whatever so i do recommend staying on base if you can get on there and another thing i do recommend is as soon as you find out your spouse's um graduation date start making plans then because the hotels and stuff go by so 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 quick because it's a lot of them graduating so the hotels go by really really quick and um yeah you want to get a a good place for a good price so um reserve it as quick as you can and make arrangements as fast as you can that way you can have it set in stone and you don't have to worry about it because if you wait last minute i know a lot of people that waited last minute and they couldn't find anything um, that was really close. They had to stay far, far off campus somewhere and, um, it's just the hassle of trying to hurry up and get on base in time for graduation and stuff like that because you have to go through a process before you can get on base. They have to, like, check your car and stuff like that and you have to show them your IDs and stuff and it's just a lot. So, I would really recommend, I would, I would definitely recommend you staying on base. Um, another thing, the day before... Um, graduation is family day um, for family day um, you do get to spend the whole day with your spouse now on family day they don't get to leave off of base you have to stay on base with them and spend time with them so like you go go back to your hotel room there's different stuff on base there's different uh, little restaurants and stuff on base well every base is different but at Fort Littlewood they did have a couple of places where you could go eat at um, we went to go look at the PX and the commissary um, we also went to go look at they had like a, a museum there 
they had i think like different parks and stuff there we went to like look at the different houses and stuff that they had so we really just explored everything that they had on base and we had a good time um they do have to be back before a certain time i think my husband had to be back around 8 p.m so they go back and then they have to uh they go back and they don't have their phones with them so you don't get to talk to them until the next the next day the very very next morning is graduation right after graduation you do get to spend time with your spouse after graduation so as soon as graduation ends and they come out they get to come with you again um they do get to go off base that day so if you want to go like off base to go to a restaurant or something like that you are able to go off base that day um uh, but it's only a certain uh a certain limit that they could go i think they can't go like a, if it's over a certain miles they can't go so um so i guess it's for like different reasons so they can make sure that they are back in time because they have to be back in time because a lot of them have to um because as soon as they get back they have to like clean out the barracks and stuff like that they have to pack all their belongings and stuff because they will be going to ait right after and some will stay at Fort Leonard and do their AIT. And some will go to different places and do their AIT there. I know there were some that went to like Texas and some that went to um, Colorado and stuff like that. So um, they have to, um, I think, I don't know if they leave that night or the very next morning. But it's a lot of them that have to like get on, uh, get, get on their flights and stuff like that. So that's why they have to be back by a certain time. Um, my husband did stay, um, did stay at Fort Leonard Woods to do his AIT train. Like I said, like I said, he is an ADA mic. So if you are going to Fort Leonard Woods and your husband is an AA mic, they will do their, for, um, their basic training in their AIT at Fort Leonard Wood. So they don't have to leave. Um, but, um, what I didn't know is that, um, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, which was after graduation, they did get, um, basically, um, they got privileges to be able to stay on campus, I mean, uh, stay on base and be able to go and do what they want to do while they're on base. So, if we would have known that, we would have stayed, but we didn't know for sure. And another thing, another reason why we had to leave is because they had like a really big snowstorm coming and we didn't want to get caught in the snowstorm. So, we did have to come back um, early Thursday. So, I didn't even get to spend the whole day with him after um, after graduation because of the fact that we had to leave because of the snowstorm coming so if it wasn't for the snowstorm and if i did know um and if i did know that he did was going to be able that i would have been able to see him then i definitely would have stayed and spent the rest of those days with him but like i said i wasn't able to so it's okay i did make of the days and the time that i did get to spend with him so it, it was good and then once they get to ait it is so much better. My husband had his phone every single day. So I got to talk to him every single day. I got to FaceTime with him. They're not as strict as they are while they're in basic training. So once your husband or your spouse gets to um, AIT, it is so, 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 so much better. I promise you it is so much better. You get to talk to them more, text them more. Um, some of them, I think, are off on weekends, Saturdays and Sundays. So they... Um, are able to like go off base and stuff like that or they're able to just do whatever they want to do on um, on base so yeah it's a lot it's a lot better um i really liked when he was in ait because during boot camp when i didn't get to talk to him it was it was so hard you guys it was really really hard not being able to talk to him but in ait like i said it is so 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 much better um what else um i'm trying to make sure i didn't leave anything out um they do have an ait graduation um i did not attend the ait graduation because of the simple fact um the day after since he was in the reserves they they were sending him back home so he had a flight to catch that next morning they already had booked his flight for him to come home so you can either go down there and pick them up 
or they could like if you live close and stuff like that you can come pick them up from base and if they live too far then they will book them a flight and they will fly them back home and it doesn't come out of pocket um that's one thing i forgot to say when they do come home for holiday block leave they're um if they're in boot camp around the time uh, around christmas time then they do get off for two weeks and during those two weeks they do not get paid for those um those two those two weeks if they do get paid they will pay them then but they will eventually deduct that from your next checks um and for them to come home during how they black leave that does come out of pocket so whether you go and pick them up or if they um decide to fly home and stuff like that they um it do you do have to pay for all that out of pocket and then for them to come back home you do have to pay out of pocket too as well um for cheaper tickets and stuff for holiday black leave i do recommend you calling um on base they have like a um travel uh travel thing or people that you can talk to that um will find you the cheapest tickets so that's what i did and i ended up I think we ended up only paying like three or four hundred dollars for a round trip ticket and that was from Missouri to Texas so yeah we luckily we were able to get that and it wasn't very very expensive like we thought we were like we thought it was going to be and it can get expensive because it is around the holidays and they know that everybody's trying to come home for the holidays and stuff like that so um so yeah I definitely will try to hurry up and get that done as well um what else i'm trying to tell you guys as much information that i remember but i think that's i think that's pretty much it um if you have any questions you can ask me if there's anything that in here that i didn't touch on and you want to know or if there's something that i said that you were confused about just leave it in the comment section below and i will definitely get back to you and let you guys know because um I, it was a lot of information so i really do feel like i left something out i tried to write everything down but i i just feel like i'm forgetting something but yeah like i said if you have any questions or anything like that then please comment i do answer to my comments um and i would really like to interact with you guys more so please 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 leave me comments if you have questions or if there's any videos or anything that you guys want me to touch base on then please leave them down below don't forget to like subscribe um to like subscribe to my channel and yeah i will see you guys later bye